Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. And I know uh, that's my intro. Uh, that's how I start to start pretty much every video. Uh, and it's what I feel. Uh, while a great deal of what I do in the black community is educating and empowering people and providing uh, services that uh, serve the community in multitudinous ways, uh, my ultimate desire is to uplift people and to see people thrive, be blessed, and live in a state of joy and peace. Um, and it comes in different ways and different forms to people. But uh, it's important to me. So, yes, that's the way I start my videos because that's what I really want. That's what I really feel. It's you know, it, after a while, it becomes cliches because you hear it all the time, but I don't want it uh, to lose its force and its power. It's genuine. It's authentic. It's what I'm, I'm about. It's what I've worked my life to become as someone that can operate outside of myself, that can look beyond just who I am and where I'm at and what I want and literally, really, truly inspire, serve and empower people to do exceptional and extraordinary things. And I hope in some way, if you're watching this video, or if you watched any of my videos, I hope that in some way that I have inspired and empowered you. Now I'm moving on uh, real quickly. Don't forget if you haven't uh, sponsored uh, your space in book number 25, uh, the information is in the description box. You can uh, pay tribute to anybody you want to uh, in this book uh, that will be published uh, toward the end of the year. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to keep on. Uh, I'm going to keep moving with this. Uh, just the production of trying to promote it is time consuming. Uh, but I really want people to be involved with it. So I hope that before it ends, you uh, get your space in the book to pay tribute to whoever you want to, however you want to. Uh, that's out of the way. Also, as always, don't forget to support the work we do in the community. Uh, that link is also going to be in the description box. Um, if you were on the live stream today, I talked in depth about uh, the impact of propaganda and the ongoing uh, agenda to feminize black men, uh, or the black male image in specific. And I hope that uh, I was able to get the point across. I hope that I was able to uh, really plant a seed as to what is necessary uh, for us to move as a people. I think sometimes we uh, know what we want, but we don't have a clue of how to obtain it. I've been there before in many different places in my life. And the, th the first thing is to make a decision that you want something. But the very next thing is to determine what it takes to have it. Uh, you can talk all day about something you want, but until you discover what it takes to have it and you start to become that person who has those uh, characteristics, those principles, those behaviors, those habits, all those things necessary to obtain that thing you say you want, then it's just sitting up in wishful thinking. It's almost like torture. It's like wanting something and not being any closer to it next year than you were this year and to have that perpetuated through your entire life. Uh, that's not why you're here. You're here to make a difference. You're here to do something exceptional, something extraordinary, something phenomenal as an individual and to have it play out in your collective, in your enclave around those people who you most uh, infinitely and intimately relate to. Uh, as far as it concerns to me, I most intimately and affectionately relate to being black. You know, uh, I'm a black husband. I'm a black man. I'm a black business owner. You know, I'm not just a business owner. I'm not just a husband. I'm, I, I, I see the distinction. I see the uniqueness. I see the uniqueness in the experience. And all of these things mean uh, something unique and special to me. There's nothing more unique and influential in my life than my blackness. Everything around it, it everything around my life, everything I've done has been directly associated to my blackness. Uh, whether it's the success I've had in business, whether it's the success I had in academia, whether it's the success I've had uh, 
financially, uh, the success I've had as an author, uh, whatever it is, it is all associated with the unique experience of being a black man while accomplishing it because my path to my successes were not the same as a white man, an Asian man, an Arab man, uh, and so forth. My pathway was uniquely influenced by the fact that I was a black male. And so for that, I intimately and affectionately relate to the black experience, being a black person. And that's the reason that I'm so passionate about the things that I speak up on. And what I want to really truly iterate here, if I don't get any other point across, is we have to stop being casual in our approaches uh, to life, in our approaches to the things we face. We've got to stop being casual in uh, addressing the challenges that are before us, the mechanisms and machinations that are being used to cripple us. Uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing uh, said that uh, a race in which the men are crippled are doomed to be oppressed. And we must understand that. We must understand the need to empower ourselves, the need to educate ourselves, the need to literally uh, set ablaze our consciousness with awareness uh, and knowledge and then to be able to effectively process that knowledge and act upon it to produce desired results. We have sit and spent our wheels far too long. We have sit up and been the puppets and the pawns of this system far too long. We are in a position now more than ever, even though it may not seem like it, to shake ourselves free of the shackles of mental and psychological oppression, to shake ourselves free from the, the tentacles of generationally perpetuated trauma. But it's gonna take work, it's gonna take focus, it's gonna take unity, it's gonna take us standing up with one another, it's gonna take us supporting those who have the expertise, the experience, and the willingness to go out and get the work done. Not everybody wants to be put on the ground, boots on the ground. Not everybody wants to be involved in the mental processes of working this thing out. Not everybody wants to deal with the darkness of depression and, and addiction and, and, and all of the other things that are true uh, problems and issues in our community. But there are some of us who are. Those are the ones you've got to get behind. Those are the ones you've got to sit up and actually let your investment and time and energy, effort and finances speak for you. It's it, it's no longer good to, to put a like and a share. I'm not saying that you don't do it. I don't say that you don't like something if you pass by. I'm saying it's going to take more than a like or a share to move this movement forward, to push this movement forward. It's going to take some true investment. Some of us are going to invest our time, our energy, our effort, our brains, our heart, and our money. I've done all of the above, and I've done it relentlessly, undyingly. Uh, I've done it through uh, numerous health scares uh, over the past six years that culminated in five heart attacks, and I didn't stop. And there have been people that are saying, that it's not worth it. It's people that have told me, look, you're investing in something that's never going to produce anything, go live your life. And I have the capacity that if I walked away from it all, I probably could live a pretty good life in a number of different places where I could probably live stress-free. I don't have to be in America and I, I, I don't have to be pouring everything I have off into something. But again, I told you in the beginning of this thing, I am intimately and affectionately associated with the people. I love my people. This isn't just about some idea. I truly love my people. I see the extraordinary nature of my people. I see the uh, unbelievable potential of my people. I see a responsibility that I hold to fight for my people, to, to, to speak to my people, to speak for my people. And I can't see the honor in abandoning my people while it may produce comfort and convenience for me. Look, I'm challenging you guys. Get behind somebody. It don't have to be me. But get behind somebody. Find somebody you believe in 
and invest in them. We've got to stop asking people to pull rabbits out of hats and, and, and make things happen. We're going to have to get outside of ourselves, outside of our comfort zones, outside of simply doing things. You know, my thing is, that's not a day that goes by that I'm not contacted by somebody in the community that needs services. Not one day. And for so long, I went hard in the paint. And I mean, just, just, just going. And, you know, it's taken me to this point to really just sit up and say, you know what? Rick, you'll sit up here and burn through your kids' inheritance, go broke, and die in a nursing home. Not as long as my wife is alive, but hey, she goes, you know, I love my kids and my kids love me. I know they do, but I live in a generation where I don't know as far as that goes. But I think about uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakadin. Dr. Ben gave us so much in the understanding of our nature and the understanding of our heritage and our history. And he left this place broke and alone if it wasn't for Dr. Uh, Dr. Rashidi, Dr. Rokunu uh, Rashidi, who passed away a month or so ago, a couple, uh, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, who was there with him. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Dr. John Howard Clark. I just look at what we've been given and how little we valued it. And yet we expect. You gotta be willing to invest in water the seeds that are being planted if you wanna see growth. And that's a problem that we have is we were willing to sit back and watch those who we look at and acknowledge that they're doing something remarkable. But at the same time, we don't want to water it. We don't want to invest in it. We don't want to expand it. We don't want to uh, expedite the growth. We just want to sit up and say, hey, you know, hey, that's pretty good. And like I said, it's going to take more than likes and shares. You know, likes and shares doesn't get the job done. So I just wanted to stop in and drop that off. We are in a battle literally for the future of our youth. And we are dealing with it in a far too casual manner. Uh, I believe, believe it's Les Brown that says, when you approach life casually, you end up being a casualty. And that's where we are as blacks. We are headed uh, towards becoming casualties. And so I hope that, you know, if this reaches someone, I hope that uh, it inspires and empowers someone. Some, some of you have skill sets that are necessary. Some of you have creative mindsets that are necessary. Some of you are the future minds uh, and, and, and brilliant minds of tomorrow. But we need you on deck. Some of you... Uh, don't have the time, but you have the resources. We need you on deck. Some of you know how to connect people. We need you on deck. This won't happen by itself. It won't, won't evolve into what it needs to be by itself on its own. It's going to require work. And I'm challenging each and every one of you who hears this to not only share it with someone, but to become a part of the movement, become a part of the work. And on that note, I'm out of here.